Here we are for my family, for my future. Episode trois. Episode trois. Three. Yes. Three. Yeah, three. 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 Episode three, man. We're so, we're so pumped to be with you. We're so pumped to be with you. Uh, <laughs> today's episode brought to you by Celsius, Ooh. our corporate sponsor. We'd like to thank Celsius for providing us zero free drinks. We've yet to get a corporate sponsorship yet. That's okay, but we'll, I still we'll like it. There. Love Celsius. Um, What's your drink today? What kind? I'm an orange. Orange is my favorite Celsius. Peach is mine. I know. That's why I got you peach today. You did. Nope, you're good. Just let it sit. Okay. <laughs> Still getting used to microphones. But, but I'm turning kind of this way to you, so I just want it to pick up. Yeah, you're good. Okay. So here we are today. We're going to be talking about the three stages of life before marriage. So, you know, we're talking for my family, for my future. A lot of what we talk through is marriage and, and kids and mm-hmm. parenting. and But we know that that's not the full extent of preparing for life, you know, like a lot of the people listening to this are going, you know, one day I want to get married, one day I want to have kids and have a family, mm-hmm. but how do I get ready for it? And so today we're going to talk about the three stages of relationships, um, three stages of life really before marriage, being single, dating, being and being engaged. engaged. Yep. And um, really the goal is just how can we make the most of the season that we're in? Mm-hmm. Um, instead of just constantly wishing that the season were over. Yeah, it sucks to wish your life away so that you can get to the next thing. Yeah, but I feel like that's a lot of times what we do. For sure. Is we just sit in one season, we can't wait until the next season. And then when you're in the next season, as soon as it starts, it's when's the next season going to be? Right. And then especially when you get to engagement, it's like, oh my gosh, can we just get to the wedding? Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, it's it's a never-ending cycle. And I think if you live in that, that can actually become not just these three stages. That can become your life. For sure. Just always waiting and wishing for the season that you're in to be over. Mm-hmm. And I think God wants I, I think God wants more for us than that. Absolutely. And so we've lived through a lot of it. Um, and so today we're just going to kind of share and talk through. And, you know, we got some some stuff that we were talking about last night that we can share. And then we'll just see where the conversation goes. Yeah. So let's start. Let's do it. Singleness. Singleness. Being single. The stage of being single we have to be honest. This is speaking from what we have observed in ministry right. for 20 years in in working with and ministering to people who are single. This is not from experience because truth be told, we started dating when we were 18 years old. 18. We knew each other from 17, 17? 16, 16 on, but yeah. we started dating right before we snuck in the window yep. of high school sweethearts. So we're not at the same high school. We weren't at the same high school, but yes, high we school. Met, we met in youth group. I was a new Christian. You had been in church all your life mm-hmm. and we almost didn't, we almost stayed single. We almost did. I was after you like white on rice and a paper plate in a snowstorm <laughs> and you wanted nothing to do with me. <laughs> That's why, let, let, can we just, true. can we just tell the audience before we get into the serious content, why I, I was spitting all kinds of game, mm-hmm. and it was not working. Mm-hmm. And I would like you to be honest and set the record straight, and not not like give a spiritual reason because I know the reason wasn't spiritual. It, Why okay. didn't you date me for the first six months that I was pursuing you? You seem to think that the reason was because you had no style and your hair was a hot mess. Okay, so I had no style. That I, I seem to believe that is the truth. Okay, isn't it? Well, but that's not why I didn't date you, but that's, yeah. Okay. Well, I I would love to know that reason because all I know is my hair. So yes, I have long hair now. Oh boy. But back then my hair was long and it was like right in my face, like cousin it. Like I looked like cousin it from the Adams family. Like how he was allowed to leave his home (laughs) looking the way he looked. Jim shorts and a t-shirt and hair down in my face and every day. All, flops all, all long. winter long didn't matter. And all I know is the day I came to youth group yep. and I had gotten my hair cut, I looked across yep. the little small group we were in mm-hmm. and you were whispering to one of your girlfriends and I and I saw the googly eyes mm-hmm. and I thought, all I had to do is get my hair cut. So don't try to act like there's some more spiritual reason. You might be right. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank goodness. I, yeah. When you walked in, I was like, that. <laughs> and thus it began. And thus it began. Yeah. So our, our experience of being single was so long ago in a different right. world. Yeah. And I feel like both of us say, say all of the time. And, you know, we want to say this to commiserate with mm-hmm. not to, you know, um, make, make you feel any worse yeah. about the situation. Being single in this day and age so hard. is hard. Yeah. We're surrounded by people that 
are single uh-huh. and um and it's a struggle it's a struggle it being single in this day and age just seems brutal and i think one of the biggest reasons that we were talking about last night that it seems like it's so hard to be single right now is the the disappearance of the friend zone oh for sure I think I remember when we would like be on a panel, like a relationship panel Mm -hmm. at church or um, something. And um, people would say like, how did you like, how did you find the one or how did you um, start date? How did you know? Like, how did just how did your relationship start? And I always said like, you don't have to be interested in every single person that comes your way. Yeah. And, but that was with a lot of friend zones around. Oh, like and like, please, for the love of all things, friend zone someone first yeah. before you just dive deep into a relationship. And now with online dating and social media and all of that, yeah. it's the 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 term friend zone when it comes to like a possible significant other. Mm-hmm. There just aren't many friend super zones. Super hard. Out there. Yeah. yeah, like you've got your you've got your crew. Yeah, but it's difficult to like welcome someone else in that yeah. you met online into a, your crew so that they can be friend zoned for a little bit. I think that makes it super hard, but I I think before we even get into all that, I think we have to make sure that we, we have to set the record straight for so many people mm-hmm. of like, we live in a sex craze, yeah. marriage obsessed, right. bachelor and bachelorette watching where, you know, marriage and relationship is like, it's been built up as like the pinnacle of life. Right. And the truth is the heroes of our faith mm-hmm. were single. Absolutely. Paul and Jesus were never married. Mm-mm. And I think it's just really important for us in this whole conversation. Like when we, we think about having the most of it, making the most of the season of being single, mm-hmm. you have to get back to a place where you understand that like you are valued and worthy without anyone else. Right. On your own. Right. Like I think culture has made it feel like you're not a full person Mm-hmm. until you have a spouse yep. and a family and all the things. And that's just not, that's not true. Like mm-hmm. you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. You like, boop. Yep. You as your own, hu- in your own humanness. Totally. Are exactly the way that you should be. Yeah. And like take heart in that, you yep. know? And I think it's so important to, to really work through as you're single. Oh yeah. Not if, if you can work through that yeah. and come to a place where you really do accept who you are, you love how God has made you mm-hmm. and you're confident in that. Mm-hmm. That is such a beautiful thing to have figured out before you get into a relationship. Oh yeah. Cause I, I think there's so many marriages that get so messed up out there right. because they bring their insecurity into the marriage Yeah, and they expect their spouse to then, complete them. Mm-hmm. And that's a, that's a big burden for a spouse to carry that's for a lot. you to have to convince me that I'm worthy mm-hmm. for you to have to love me in such a way that fulfills my insecurity. That's right. a, that's a big burden. Like it's so much better to just figure that out early on. Sure. Yeah. Um, like, uh, we we're, um, I'm like hyper obsessed with Deion Sanders right now. <laughs> okay. I'm hyper obsessed. I'm like wildly obsessed with Deion Colorado. Oh, no buffs. Come on buffs. Let's go. I'm jump. I'm full on the bandwagon. Stayed up to 1 a.m. watching uh, their game recently. Yep. Even though I had to preach the next morning, I didn't care. Um, but I, I love in one of the Dion interviews that we were watching together, he was like, I don't care if, like, like how, how do you say it? He was like, I'm not doing this so that you have a good opinion of me. I already have a good opinion yeah. of me. Like, I, your opinion of me is not my opinion of me. Right. Like, uh, what was it? I... I already feel good about me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's exactly it. I'm not doing this so you feel good about me. I already feel good about me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like, am who I am. I was like, that is such a beautiful thing to be able to say and to live in and mm-hmm. believe. And I think, you know, when you're single, I think it's one of the most important things to work through and walk through is that you are fine on your own. Mm-hmm. God made you and you have value and worth and a calling. Right. And And that's where I think, you know, we were talking – this past week of like, what's the way, like, what's the one word that Mm -hmm. could really capture um, making the most of the season of being single. And I think it's that single is really about the growing, the growing. Yeah. It's about making sure that you are growing into all that God has called you to be Mm -hmm. with or without a partner. Right. 
and being confident in it. Yeah. I think growing into confidence as a single person, especially in this day and age, is tricky. Yeah. Um, but if you just continue to stay close to Jesus yeah. and allow him to be your confidence and your peace and your comfort and not oh am i the right person for this person that i want to like am i am i projecting who i want to be for attracting somebody else yeah yeah instead of just growing right like making sure that if god leads you to a relationship mm -hmm. your tanks are full right like i think that should be a thing like you're growing to a place where you know you're single man grow in your financial health yeah grow in your spiritual health Grow in your emotional and mental health. Grow in your adulting. Grow in your adulting. You yeah. Know? And and yes, physical health. I know we talk a lot about looks and dating and mm -hmm. physical attractiveness, but man, when you're single, like take care of yourself. For sure. Be be in shape. Like do do whatever you can. Yeah. And not for the sake of attracting someone else. No. But for the sake of becoming all that God wants you to be. Yeah. Like if you can do that and you just focus on growing, 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 mm -hmm. it's amazing. Uh, your life will benefit. And as a side benefit, mm -hmm. you will actually become a really attractive person For to sure. really attractive people. But that can't be the goal. Correct. That that's don't do it for yeah. the approval or the acceptance of someone else. That's right. Also, also <laughs> that will be more attractive to someone else. Yeah, because real talk, one of the biggest things that I think that most people experience when they get into relationships and then they get serious mm -hmm. and they get into marriage, we, we counsel people all the time who one spouse is frustrated with the other spouse yeah, because the other spouse isn't growing and doesn't have a growth mindset. Right. In, in, in my mind, like once you get past some of the filters, we'll talk about the filters in a second of like dating. Mm -hmm. Once you get past, like I want to have someone that loves Jesus and mm -hmm. loves the church and helps me love Jesus and mm -hmm. love the church more. I think finding someone with a growth mindset is such an important deal. Oh yeah. Because life is all about growing. And so if you're not growing yourself, right. how are you going to attract somebody that has a growth mindset? Yeah. Well, and it's a lot easier to focus on yourself mm -hmm. when you're single because if you're like, I'll I'll work on myself like once I'm in a relationship, mm -mm. then it's like, oh gosh, you're you're working you're, on the plane while it's in the air, right? Yeah. Ooh, you like that? Where'd you come up with that? It's preacher speak. Okay, <laughs> that was good. It's true, yeah, though. for sure. It's like you're working on a plane while you're, yeah. while you're flying it, man. Yep. I Isn't wouldn't it? try to come up with another one, but I can't. So I'm just gonna let it go. <laughs> you're coming up. It's like you're. It's like stop sign when like it's green. <laughs> I don't know. Stop light when it's green. It's like you're getting the ingredients while you're already cook boiling Make the it. water. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's really important, I think, to to grow as much as you can instead of I think what we see so many people do, which is wasting the season. Yeah. Like. I saw it, uh, and it went viral. So I'm sure some of you saw it, but there was a there was a TikTok or Instagram reel or something of this young girl, and she was like basically saying like I love being single because, and she describes her weekend, and it was like I slept in till noon, I binge watched this show till 4 p.m., wow. I got up and and went and had dinner, and I came back and just watched TV all night, and it was the best weekend ever. And I'm like, I get that, like that's cool, get it, girl, but like. I mean, if that's like what your life is, there, yeah. there's just so much more that I think God has mm -hmm. for you. And in that season when you don't have anyone else to impress, I think it's easy to just like, Buh, yeah, for sure. I'll just waste it. Right. And, and man, God has so much more in store for you, especially because I've seen uh, the church be blessed and served mm -hmm. and grown and, and uh, the church's effectiveness increased when single people go, mm -hmm. I'm going to put my head down and serve mm -hmm. the church. And just trust that God's going to take care of the rest. Sure. I was just going to bring up how, like, if you're single and you're wanting to find someone mm -hmm. at some point. Um, go to church. Go to church. Lord have mercy. Don't hit the online dating apps. Don't hit the bars. Yep. Like, invest in something that the is... gym is also a very bad place to find somebody for the most part, I would like to say. <laughs> That after counseling too many people, yeah, I would like to publicly say that gyms are not a good place to meet significant others 95% of the time. Maybe 97. It's bad. Yeah. It's just not a good Real foundation bad. for like, you're there and like, why are you there? Are you there to... you there to get fit. Yeah. And or, everybody else looking good too. Yeah. You're building the, the, the foundation of the relationship. Are you there for your car cardio health? Yes. Or the the foundation of the relationship is... 
mostly lust. Sure. <laughs> then we get to the friendship zone. That's a different conversation. Yeah. But yes. But like, I mean, you've preached this before. Yes. Like if you're in a situation where you're like, man, I just want to just be around other people, mm -hmm. like-minded people. Maybe try a place that you actually have like-mindedness. And if you are a follower of Jesus, yep. church is the perfect spot for that. And someone you may attract will see you as someone worth dating because they go, oh my gosh, that person is like- Making a difference. Making a difference. Yep. Serving selfless, all of, all of the things. So- and even if you don't find someone at church, even you still if have community. you still have community and your life is making an incredible difference. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a, it, it's a can't lose part of your life. Absolutely. If you invest in the local church and yep. you're single. There is no negative outcome in that. Right. It's only good. Yeah. It's only good. The single life is about the growing. Growing, growing, growing. Grow, 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 grow. Mm -hmm. Now then we move on to. We get into the dating. Dating. The dating Oh, girl, I remember I remember that first date I took you on. Oh, oh Charlie's. Charlie's. Oh, Charlie's. Shout out, Oh, Charlie's. That's another corporate sponsor. I don't even know if Oh, Charlie's is still around anymore. I don't think it is. Is it out of business? Close. I don't know. Is it out of business, Josh? No, it's not. They're no. still around? Okay. Okay. They got great free rolls. We have a thing with free dinner rolls. Texas, Texas Roadhouse, Oh, Charlie's. We have a thing. Yep. But I remember that was our first date. Oh, Char yeah. oh Charlie's. Oh, Charlie's. Uh, I thought I was fancy, man. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I remember taking I – mean, I, I remember looking at the menu and going, all right, like, I don't care what she gets. She, you know, I'm going to pay for whatever you get. But in order to to even the bill out, I'm going to get a little cup of soup, <laughs> a little, yeah. little cup of potato soup to even and that bill out. Note to the fellas, don't make your new girlfriend feel like they're eating – so much more than you because you're worried about the bill. Okay. Because I was like, I'm going to okay. have the... Okay. Okay. Let's stop right there. You you are incredibly in shape and you work out and you eat healthy and all that stuff. Comma, and you can also put away more food than me. Yeah. So this, not, this is not but about... That, I'm not... We know that about each other now. Okay. When we were sitting across the table from each other at O'Charlie's and I was like, okay, <laughs> you got soup. Cool. I'll just... I was thinking about the money. You were thinking about the calories. Yeah. Oh, I love it so yeah. much. <laughs> that was 20. That was almost. No, over 20 than, years. Yeah. We've been, we started dating in uh, April of 20, oh, or 2003. Yep. So we just celebrated 20. We just hit 20 years being together total. Yep. Which is crazy. Um, the dating, man. I, I remember long distance dating <sighs> when I went to Bible college and you were at University of Kentucky. I was in Ohio. Go Cats. So we were about two hours away from each other mm -hmm. and um, on the phone every night. Lord have oh mercy. Oh, gosh. This was before FaceTime. This is, yeah. I, some, some people listening to this are going to be like, you all lived in the Stone Age. This was before like everyone was using Facebook. No, no. We, well, we were using Facebook because Facebook had just gotten started and it was only for people with college email addresses. Right. And I felt, I was like, okay, you got I Facebook. Got, yeah, oh got gosh. it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That was the time. Crazy. But yeah. man, dating, I, I feel like, I feel like the best way we can describe the dating season mm -hmm. to make the most of it mm -hmm. is that dating is about the testing. Testing. It's testing. gotta be about the testing. Yeah. It's gotta be about testing to see, is this person that you're with right. legit? Right. Are they worth your time? Are they worth your effort? I think we would both be in agreement that, uh, we, we would never recommend that someone take dating lightly. No. I mean, if, Yeah. For your family and for your future. For family for your future. If you go into dating with it just being like willy nilly, you know, there's no end goal in mind. Obviously, I will say this too. If you have an end goal of marriage, it's probably not the best. This is just a side note, a little yeah. in there. If you have a goal of marriage in the end and you are um, on a date with someone, say your first or second or third – or fourth yeah. date, you don't need to say, so like, when do you want to, like, what's, what's your, like, do you want to get married and like have kid, like yeah, yeah. just yeah, slow your roll. Like, yeah. Don't lead with that. That's maybe fine. Don't lead with, I want to get married right now, please. Oh. Yeah. Like when, what's your next, what's your two year goal? Marriage? Uh, yeah. Maybe not that. Yeah. Maybe not lead with that. Yeah. But yeah, I think that we'd both say take dating seriously. Yes. Or else, well, we, again, this is from. 
I would say both experience and observation. Yeah. We took dating very seriously, but, mm -hmm. but then we also observed in a lot of people that when you don't take dating seriously, you end up giving parts of yourself away. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about, you know, sexual boundaries. Right. I'm talking about time. Yeah. I'm talking about your attention, your affection, right. your heart. There are things that you end up giving away in dating relationships mm -hmm. that take a long time to heal from yeah. if you don't take dating seriously. Yeah. And I can say this too from my, like my perspective. I was someone who did not date. Correct. Um, I was and, the first and only boyfriend. Yes. Let's and go. I went, well, I should say I went on like a couple dates with okay. people that I had friend zoned. Correct. Um, and again, it was a different time, but I had really high, like if I didn't see mm -hmm. some semblance of something in the future, like we could always be friends. That's totally cool. But if I didn't see like future, yeah, it was like, no, nah, I'm good. Yep. I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm stable and I'm confident in who I am and I'll see you at church or I'll see you at school or I'll see you whatever. Yeah. Um, if you didn't see a future, you weren't gonna waste your time. No. And I, I was also like incredibly judgmental yeah. as a, um, high schooler. Yeah. Um, and so I think especially for, for the young adults that are listening right now, like mm -hmm. Especially people in their 20s, mid 20s, late 20s, early 30s. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't want to waste your time. No. I think time is just one of the most valuable resources that you got, mm -hmm. especially when you're talking about dating and, and seeing if there's a potential partner. Absolutely. Dating's about the testing. And yeah. if someone, and I, I, I think this is something, you know, we were, talking about this on, uh, uh, we were talking about this on our walk the other night. Like, we need to make sure that in the dating season, that we are encouraging people to not grade people too generously. Oh yeah. I, I, we've seen so many times that people we love will go into a dating relationship and there are major red flags. Yeah. Like there are like, I mean, wah, screaming wah, red flags wah, and they'll be like, well, I may be a little concerned about this one aspect of yeah. your life. I'm like, hang on. Oh my gosh. You should like pull the eject button right now. Yeah. You should like, I, I think sometimes we grade so generously. We, we want to give people the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And my whole thing is like in dating, let God give that person the benefit of the doubt. Oh, absolutely. God knows that person and he loves that person yeah. and he's going to uh, cover a multitude of their sins mm -hmm. with, you know, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, love. Let, let God be very, very gracious and generous to them. You need to see them for who they are. Right. Because you are going to end up signing up for a relationship and there is no perfect person. No. There is no the one. The one is the one you say yes to. Right. But you need to know exactly what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. And so don't grade too generously. Would you agree? I would totally agree. Also, trust your people. Yeah. Like trust your crew. If if that's your family, if that's your friends, if you are entering into something and we'll talk about like what how to prioritize things in a second, but like if your people are going what yeah. are you that him mm -hmm. or her? But the key to that is, and this is a, a big thing that we that we've experienced that I think would change the game mm -hmm. for people in dating relationships. If you're dating right now and you're wondering, am I am I grading too generously? Yeah. Am I not seeing with the right eyes? And and maybe you've heard some of your friends make some comments like, "Hey, have you thought about this?" Or I'm not so sure about that. Your friends are probably scared. Your family's probably yeah. scared to hurt you. Right. By saying a, a real concern. Yeah. So what you should do if you're dating is you should be humble enough mm -hmm. and bold enough to go to the people you love and trust and say, will you speak into my life? Yeah. Will you tell me, is there anything about this person that I'm not seeing? Mm -hmm. Do you have any red flags about our relationship? Mm -hmm. And if, I mean, if that permission is given, you are going to get the raw, honest truth. And to, to add to that, if your friends and family see you dive in with both feet, mm -hmm. On date two, mm -hmm. they're gonna be like, "Oh gosh, I I don't I really don't want to hurt." Like, just slow your roll. Slow your like, roll. It it's testing. A, yeah, test. Like takes time. Takes it's a, it's a I about said it's a sprint, not a marathon. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Absolutely. Yeah. It it, it you need to give the relationship time to flourish. You know, one of the things we've counseled so many people on is even if they've been together for three to six months mm -hmm. and it's all going great. Mm -hmm. And they think, Oh my gosh, I'm going to marry this person. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, have you seen them stressed yet? Right. 
Have you seen what their reaction is to stress? Have you seen them angry? Have you seen them? Um, yeah, like the good, the good feels mm -hmm. and the bad feels. Have you seen them at their worst yet? Yeah, because they have a worst. Mm -hmm. And and if you don't know their reaction to stress, if you don't know the reaction to failure, if you don't know their coping mechanisms, you don't know them yet. Right. And so they have not passed the test. Yeah. I remember when we were dating, they were like, have you guys had like an argument yet? And like, I mean, we were like, I hope I don't want, but like you need to have yeah. like some totally. disagreements and some, not just like, okay, that's your opinion. And here's mine. Do like you remember what our first big fight was. I remember what it was. Oh gosh. Was it poker? I was going to say luggage, but you're right. It was poker. It no, was luggage poker. was on down the road, girl. That was yeah. The, the, uh, in freshman year of college, I was involved in a poker game every week. And you were like, oh my gosh, like in your like very conservative religious mm -hmm. upbringing, you're like, gambling is bad. Mm -hmm. I'm like, girl, I've been playing poker since I was in middle school. I ain't mm -hmm. going to stop now. But it was like a real fight of like, yeah. you didn't think that it was godly or good to be gambling and I didn't see anything wrong with it. And there was a lot of tension mm -hmm. there for- When I had seen church leadership from yeah. in my past kind of respond, not just kind of negatively, yeah, very negatively to it. So yeah. I was like- you're like, I don't want I don't, this for my future yeah, husband. I don't want to get yeah. caught up in gambling, you know? Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, like you need to have your first fight. You need to see how you guys respond. Like it, it's it, it, dating is all about the testing. Mm -hmm. And I just think so many people grade way too generously. Right. Yeah. But then and, also we have seen, and I would say this, especially for the vast majority of singles that we are with, that we are in life with right now, mm -hmm. people that are dating right now. Mm hmm there, there, you can also be guilty on the on the other side of grading too harshly. Yeah, you got high hopes. Oh man, you looking for like, like a hundred percent, a hundred. Like you're looking for like the bachelor of bachelors. Like you're looking yeah. for like the guy that or the girl that looks amazing, talks amazing, has no emotional baggage, has like, and you are like perfectly Your in family's line. Family's perfect. Family's perfect. You guys agree on everything. Like your hopes are so high, mm -hmm. and it's like. I think you need to like be a little bit more realistic, homie. <laughs> well, and also be realistic about yourself. Correct. Because like you ain't perfect. Right. I ain't perfect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I think about our relationship. I'm like, man, I am really lucky that you said yes to me because there's a lot of boxes that I probably didn't check, but you saw a lot of potential and, and the big boxes I did check. Oh, for sure. You know? But there was a lot of things about me and my life and my background and all that, that, that actually weren't, uh, they, they, they were yellow flags. You know, yeah, probably but the, the big boxes of faith, yeah. commitment, honor, mm -hmm. integrity, mm -hmm. all of that stuff were boxes that I checked for you. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to know what boxes I checked for you. Just <laughs> Just Girl, kidding. you checked all the boxes <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. Yeah, like, right. Ouch. You checked all the boxes for me. This was definitely a situation where I know you hear it all the time. Pastors like, I really outkicked my coverage and <laughs> I'm married up. I did marry way, 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 way up. And you're sweet. And you checked all those boxes, but I still have my things. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you definitely do. Yeah. That's okay. Um, <laughs> we won't get into this. <laughs> we, we will not. We will not. No. Um, at some point down the road, we will. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I just think I think you got to grade. You can't grade too harshly. Yeah. Because you are signing up for commitment and love of someone who is imperfect. Right. And I think so many. And I'm. I'm, I'm gonna say. So, I'm, I'm. I'm gonna give my spiel about. Getting married young. Yeah. Okay. And some people are going to disagree with me. I've had many people disagree. I, I'm a uh, – off of the stage, off of preaching, I am I have a lot of unpopular opinions. Like I love talking about pyramids. Oh, boy. Big pyramids guy. Can we not do that? Okay. <laughs> Josh and I consider talking about pyramids forever. <laughs> I got, I'm a big conspiracy theory guy. I love it all. Okay. okay. So I got lots of opinions. But one of my opinions that I don't really ever share from stage but I share it with people one-on-one -on -one, is that contrary to popular cultural opinion, I actually do believe that if you can find someone that checks the, the boxes, mm -hmm. the important boxes, faith, family desires, friendship, um, uh, obviously physical attraction is part of that. There are some boxes to check. But if you can find that in your young 20s, mid 20s, mm -hmm. And and yes, they may not check all the boxes, right? But man, you have great affection for them, and they. But it, it's okay. I I actually do encourage, and I think it's a great decision, especially this day and age, given how hard it is to find a partner. Mm -hmm. I think there's nothing wrong with getting married young, mm -hmm. and I actually would say, go for it. 
if they check the boxes, mm-hmm. if your family and friends are are in mm-hmm. and your filters are are met, I think even if they're not a hundred percent the most ideal person that you would that you dreamt about from a kid, I've seen people build really, really good, amazing lives. Yeah. And and the thing is, a marriage is something that is built. Right. It's something that two people work on. It's mm-hmm. so like, man, when you two find changing people, people, two changing people, like, yeah, it's like this. People ask us all the time, like, do you, do you regret getting married young? I'm like, heck no. Mm-mm. I'm like so thankful we did mm-hmm. because dating in this time and 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 in this day and age is so hard. Mm-hmm. So I I, I just I, I hate seeing so many young people who have good opportunities, and and good intentions and, too, and, and they're and good intentions, but they pass up on opportunities for relationships that could flourish into something. Yeah. You know, like truth be told, you and I weren't all that alike no. when we started dating. Mm-mm. I mean, I was like super rough around the edges, rebellious, didn't really know my way around church. Mm-hmm. You were like the perfect church girl who was struggling with judgmentalism and self-righteousness. Right. But like over time, we've grown this beautiful thing where like you have made me more holy and I've made you take more risks. Right. And all of this has just become... It's like something we've grown over time. Sure. And so I I just say that to say for anyone out there who's like, man, I'm really struggling with whether or not they're the one. Right. You're never going to find someone that hits 100% mm-hmm. of everything you'd ever thought you would have in a in a mate. And that's okay. That's totally okay. I think, too, I'm trying to find the way to say it. Like, um, if you've got your boxes to check uh-huh. and the top two or three are not checked – Mm-hmm. pretty quickly, they probably ain't the right one. Oh, for sure. And those like, boxes should don't, be easy to check. Like the the bottom ones mm-hmm. may because we are different. Yep. Like I don't think I had the box at the bottom of my list of needs to be rough around the edges and um, right. you didn't have must be holier than me. Right. <laughs> but like those things are – you are able to give that time to like – mesh into something really yeah. beautiful those top however many boxes that are i don't know like i bet guys have like mm-hmm. i don't know eight things on their boxes eight boxes and some girls have their girls boxes. have yeah so like it's okay to have all of those mm-hmm. boxes but the ones at the bottom yeah. Be okay with them not being checked or waiting to see if they are. Correct. And and the, and the opposite is true for those top boxes. There are some things that will be unattractive to you about your partner in the beginning mm-hmm. that actually become attractive over time. Absolutely. That's like be patient in the waiting at the bottom for mm-hmm. the bottom things. The top, top. things. You got to love Jesus. Yeah. You got to be committed to the local church. Yeah. You need to make sure that you have the same family goals. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. You need to talk uh, – before you sign up for engagement or marriage, you need to talk through, do you want to have kids? Do you want to have a family? Mm-hmm. These are the things you, you really need to think through the stuff. There's mm-hmm. big boxes to check. Mm-hmm. But in my mind, like, yes, a friendship. Like, I can talk to them I mean, you and guys communicate. need to be able to have fun together. Yeah. So much of marriage is just like – it's just you and I hanging out. Right. I think, I think when you're dating, you're like, oh my gosh, when we get married, it's just going to be like, we're working and we're having sex and we're like, like, yeah. um, actually most of the time it's just like, it's hanging hey, out, or, like, being what, friends. Like, what do you want to watch tonight? Right. You know? Yeah. And so love Jesus, love the church. Do you, do you find them enjoyable and do yeah. you have a good friendship with them? Right. And yes, are you attracted to them? But physical attraction is such a weird box to check. Yeah. Because like you could be so attracted to someone in the dating phase and think that they are just so hot mm-hmm. and you're just so attracted to them. They're a 10. Yeah. But physical attraction ebbs and flows. Yeah. So you need to be very careful with that. Yeah. Uh, we've seen a lot of people get married who they're, you know, their number one reason that they started it was because of physical attraction. Mm-hmm. But physical attraction will not carry a marriage. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, it won't. you could find somebody who's a 10, but mm-hmm. they are a total turd. Oh, yeah. And, Six months after you said, oh, my gosh, this person is so amazingly attractive Mm -hmm. and they treat you like crap or they don't lead you closer to Jesus or they have an issue. I don't know. Like they have an addiction, a hidden addiction, whatever it is. Then you go, oh, he's no longer a 10. She's she's fallen kind of. I mean, it like attractiveness is um, something that. Yes, physical attractiveness is yeah. one thing, but I can be more physically attracted to you 
because you check the other boxes. Yeah, because of that character and yeah. because of friendship and because of integrity. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just think there there are other boxes that are more important. Yeah. But I think the whole thing with dating is it's the testing. It's a test. And don't give up on the test. Don't give up on the test. Like, don't, don't be like, well, I mean, that, that test is super hard. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to take the – I'm going to re reorg things – so that this person can pass my test. Nope. Don't grade too generously. And don't grade too. Don't grade too harshly. Too tough, yeah. And give it time. Yeah, I would say err on the side of grade a little tougher. For sure. But err on the side of grading har- more harshly, but don't grade too harsh because yeah. you might miss out on something that yeah, yeah, yeah. That God could really grow into a special relationship. Ah. We had some listener questions um, on this one that was like. Uh, uh, w- one question was about uh, settling. about settling. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, people say don't settle, and I think we kind of answer that in, in what we're saying is like, yeah, yeah, don't settle, but also like you need to be realistic. For sure. Um, the the other question that came through was settling about, would be removing or reorging those top three or four boxes, correct, and throwing them out or or moving like, them down, moving and, them down on the list. That's what settling yeah. in in my mind. That's yeah. what that means. I do think a lot of times that people settle when they find someone they're physically attracted to mm-hmm. and someone that they have fun with mm-hmm. those two th- and like have a friendship with yeah. when those two boxes are checked, a lot of times faith and family yeah. can be moved down the list. And I think that's a big mistake. Keep them up there. I think it's a big mistake. I think faith and family, your relationship with God, yeah. your beliefs about God, your walk with Jesus and your desires for family. I, to me, those are the top two. Yep. I also think that you need to be very you just again it's testing. You need to know about their financial baggage. Mm-hmm. You need to know about their family baggage, extended family baggage. Mm-hmm. You need to know about and it, you're not going to find anybody with no baggage. No. But you just need to know about the baggage going into it. Yeah. Uh, we had another listener question that was like um about time. Um how much time would you recommend mm-hmm. someone date before they get engaged? And I think that's sure. really hard, but I do think that there is a there's a window that I would say is too soon. And there's a window yeah. that I would say is too long. So for instance, someone's in their mid twenties and they've been dating the same person for five years. I, four or five years in, I start going, okay, you're mm-hmm. in your mid twenties. You ain't getting any younger. Mm-hmm. Life ain't changing much. Yeah. What's the holdup? And is there just a hard comp that normally when, when we counsel someone that's been dating for yeah. four or five years and they're not married yet, there's normally something going on. I think it's typically, like if you can get depth mm-hmm. in a relationship in six months mm-hmm. and you feel like you've talked about the nooks and crannies of who they are and who you are and you're still on the same page and yeah. all of that stuff, that's that's amazing. Um, but if you've been with somebody for four or five years and depth is still not part of your relationship, yep, I think it's all about depth. Yeah, I really do. I think it's all about um, good. how – how like under the surface your conversations and your, um, your connection is versus we like to have fun and hang out together every day. It's like, but are you talking about when usually there's one person in that relationship that's not satisfied for sure. Normally one person in that relationship is going like either I'm not sure I want this Mm -hmm. or the other one is saying, is this going anywhere? Right. Which means there's not a deep conversation being had. Right. Yeah, it, that's it, it's definitely about depth. Have the conversation. But on the other side, I think if you're getting engaged after being with someone for six months, mm-hmm. you just need to understand you are stepping into some unknown territory. Yeah, because you can't possibly have. You can, I guess. You can. Yeah, it's just it's hard to figure out the like. Have you been able to have a fight, like right. a fight, fight? Have you seen him stressed? Right. All the all of yeah, the. the um, all of the, the, yeah, all the things. Yep. Yep. Um, and then let's hold off to talk about, uh, sex life, sexual boundaries and all that until our next section, which is, I think the engagement section, which I think we're pretty well ready to get to that section now. Uh, Dating is about the testing. Yep. Single is about the growing. Dating is about the testing. Yep. Engagement to me, the word that we've been talking about the best describes how to make the most of that season is all about learning to appreciate the waiting. The waiting. It's the waiting. Yeah. Engagement is such a period of waiting. It's mm-hmm. like, man, you had this big moment where he popped the question and you said yes and you celebrate and mm-hmm. you set a date and then it's just like, 
Now what? Life comes to a screeching halt yeah. and everything is slow. And it's like you just keep waiting, waiting, waiting mm-hmm. for the big day. The the big day. I love that. The big day. It's like there's nothing after the big day. Right. Because truthfully, what happens after the big day is a lot of what happened before the big day. Mm-hmm. You know, like when you're in that engagement season and you're waiting, that is actually a really good picture. I think that's something we were talking through is like, that's a really good picture of what your life with that person is going to be like after the wedding. Yeah. You're just I mean, minus the the carrot at the end where you're like, oh, I'm so excited about that. But but I think there are carrots along the way that you end up as a married couple going, oh, like we're going to buy our first house oh, or sure. yeah. oh, we're going to have our first kid or, yeah. and then it's like all the milestones that, the, that your kid experiences. Yeah. Like, but I mean, that doesn't happen as correct, you know, but there's always something big to look forward to. Mm-hmm. But most of life is just the mundane waking up and, and going through life yeah. and learning to appreciate when there isn't a big event. Right. And that's a lot of engagement. A it's, ton. I mean, we were, how long were we engaged? 14 too, months? Too freaking long. A long time. It's the only thing I would say about engagements. Just don't do a long engagement. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say all that with the caveat of when I hear of a long engagement, usually. Now, we did a long engagement and we we were like one of the rare uh, outliers. Mm-hmm. Normally, when someone has a long engagement, and we're just going real talk around here, right? Let's just real talk. Real talk. When there's a long engagement... Normally, it's a couple that's already living together and already sexually active. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, I'm like, okay, well, yeah, you're going for a long engagement because you're not trying to hurry things up for that aspect of it. But that is a real thing that like short engagements are helpful if you're fighting for sexual purity. And our general encouragement to anyone out there, like even if you're living together, if you're already sexually active and you're engaged, we like you will serve your marriage so well. Yeah. By saying, hey, for the rest of our engagement, yeah. from here to wedding day, we're going to be abstinent. Yep. We're going we're gonna to sleep separately. We're going to live separately. Mm-hmm. We're not going to be sexually active because we're going to trust that disciplining ourselves now mm-hmm. will pay off when we are married. Absolutely. Too many young men come up to me and they go, man, it must be easy for you now that you're married. Mm. Like, dude, you think sexual purity and sexual discipline – gets easier when God's okay with you having sex with your spouse. Like, no, the enemy still attacks oh, yeah. and, and you have to fight for your purity. And Absolutely. so if you can't be, if you and your spouse can't be disciplined in the, in the waiting, right. The, the discipline isn't going to automatically be there once you're married. No. So I, I think it's really important to accept that season of waiting mm-hmm. and to learn to just enjoy the friendship. Absolutely. Enjoy the people in your life. Yeah. What do you think about, um, about in that season of waiting, mm-hmm. how you interact with your friends and family. Man, what do you mean? I, I, I feel like it's a, I feel like that some people, um, they, they begin to just kind of separate from their friends and family. Oh yeah. And, and I, I, I think it's a great time actually to, to, to honor your family. Oh, for and sure. To honor your friends. Yeah. Like use, you're getting ready to enter into a, what we hope Mm -hmm. is a lifelong relationship with your spouse and their people. Yep. Same with your spouse entering into a lifelong relationship with you and your people. And so I wouldn't wait until it's like final Mm -hmm. to then go, all right, now like you guys like get to know each other, like do things that will provide support Yep. because that those first, everybody says the honeymoon period is like the year after and then it um, wears off but it's you you want people in your life that can see you together and know you together and support you together mm-hmm. um after the day yeah. after the the big the wedding day yeah. you know yeah it's, it's it's like you want to both prepare mm-hmm. for life together mm-hmm. and get a tribe around you mm-hmm. And also know that life is going to change. Absolutely. Like you're not going to hang out. Like yeah. guys out there, you're not going to hang out with your boys as much. Right. And, and you know, you're not going to be with your extended family as much. Right. So take that season to really honor and appreciate mm-hmm. the fact that those people helped you get to where you are and, mm-hmm. and celebrate them and thank mm-hmm. them and, and just let that be a good season where you, you recognize, it, you know, it's not going to change completely, but it's going to change some. For sure. And you want the people that have been with you through singleness and through dating. Mm-hmm. Um, and now leading up to marriage 
to like be like, no, I like go hang out with yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like we we support you in this. We want you guys to have a build a relationship together. Build a relationship together. Yeah, build a life together. Yeah, yeah. Because the building doesn't stop after Ooh. marriage. It's I the mean, starting that, point. It's the starting point. Yeah, it's the starting point. Yeah. And, and I, I think we both agree that in that season of engagement, the one thing that so many couples don't do that is just an absolute mistake and would help them so much is counseling. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Most people wait until they're, they're married and they're years into it and it's all falling apart to get into counseling. It's like, man, you need premarital counseling for sure. You need a counselor to get in there and see how you guys are working through the stress of planning a wedding. Absolutely. Working through the stress of setting boundaries with your, with your in-laws, with your extended Mm -hmm. family. Yep. And, and that's, that's the kind of stuff that will just set you up for success for Mm -hmm. years to come. Counseling is just a must. Oh, it's huge. I wish we had done it. Yep. More specifically. I mean, I wish yeah, we did the general premarital counseling. We did like, yeah, it was like what? It was two months yeah, or something. It, it, but to it have wasn't some, enough. No, to have someone follow you, not that you have to be with them, on, like meet with a counselor on a weekly basis necessarily, but to have somebody that can, you can just, okay, so we came up against yep. this thing. I wouldn't say roadblock, but yeah. This new thing in our life. And this is how we handled it. And this is how we handled it. Yeah. Can you just yeah. help us like walk through that together? Be, with yeah, because in those helpful. early stages of marriage, and I think even in, in engagement, you know, engagement is that weird thing where it's like, yes, you aren't married yet, but you are ultra committed. Oh, yeah. I mean, to break an engagement is a very, very, very um, traumatizing. Oh, deal. that's devastating. It's devastating. So yeah. I mean, you are very committed, not married yet, but you are very committed. Uh-huh. But I think to have so, so you're laying all the groundwork for what this relationship is going to be. Right. Like you're setting your norms mm-hmm. for interacting with each other and dealing with things mm-hmm. in those early stages. Yeah. So to have a counselor say, healthy, not healthy. Right. Don't do this, do that. Yeah. Oh it's my all gosh. it's all every stage is yeah. all about the foundation that you start. Yep. Like in singleness. Yep. The foundation that you start in singleness is growing yourself. Yep. If you are confident in who God made you to be, yep. the rest will come in time. Yep. The dating. dating stage, testing, testing, like the 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 foundation that you have, like these are the boundaries that I have. Yep. These are the values, values and boxes that I, that my significant other at some point down the road needs to check. It's yep. all foundational. Yep. And then engagement, engagement, same thing. You're waiting. You're learning to enjoy and appreciate and and move through life in a healthy way. Yeah. A together. strong foundation. Yeah, a strong yeah. foundation. Yeah. Learn about you, you, you gotta learn to appreciate those seasons mm-hmm. where there isn't something big happening. Right. And just enjoy it. Cause man, like most of our life now is not big moments. No. Most of our life is just like, hey, you wanna go on a walk tonight? Yeah. And we're just in talking about life and enjoying that's yeah. Ninety percent of life. Yeah. Now, what we talked about last week, having those like not carrots, but things like to look to. things to look forward to is so, it's so, so important, yeah. but that's not like on a weekly basis Correct. necessarily, unless you're like going out to eat is the thing Heck yeah, to forward to. Let's go Texas yeah. Roadhouse. <laughs> that was what we said last <laughs> it week. It was for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The waiting, the waiting, the waiting. Yeah. Yeah. I think the key is just making sure that whatever season you're in, mm-hmm. you're making the most of Make it. The most of it. Like just don't let a season go by because man, God is at work in your life. Mm-hmm. Jesus wants to move. He wants to grow. He wants mm-hmm. to change. He wants to help you become the man or the woman you were created to be. Right. And just don't sit around and think, well, I'm in this season right now. So I'm kind of stuck. No, man, mm-hmm. you're not Make stuck. Make the most of it. Make the most of it. Yeah. And you don't have to wait till the next season mm-hmm. to experience God's goodness yeah. right now. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's been fun to go through all the seasons with you. Yeah. It's the best. Dating, engaged, married now for 16 years. Mm-hmm. Now we're about to go into new seasons with teenagers. Yep. and Still building. Still building. Yep. Still building. Still going. Yeah. Well, love doing this with you. It's fun. It's fun for my family, yep. for my future. Episode three. Episode three in the books. Yeah. Peace.